Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be bringing you another episode in my rainbow series of book recommendations and this is a series where I basically just pick a colour and then I recommend five books from my shelves that are that colour. It's a pretty self-explanatory concept, I will leave the playlist linked in the cards and in the description if you want to find out more of these recommendations, but it's basically just a way of me talking about books that I don't often get a chance to talk about too much on the channel. So today we are doing blue books and I'm going to kick it off with Melt My Heart by Bethany Rutter. This this is a young adult contemporary novel that has rom-com kind of elements to it. It's a really fat positive novel and it also has fantastic bisexual representation that meant a lot to me when I was reading it. We are following Lily Rose who is in that kind of summer in between finishing her exams and going off to university if she actually does want to go to university and a big part of this novel is her figuring out if that's something that she actually wants to do or if she's considering doing it just because it's kind of what is expected for her. We are also following the complicated relationship relationship that she has with her sister. Her twin sister is kind of very conventionally attractive, like she really keeps fit, she's quite slim and that does cause a little bit of conflict between these two sisters but it's less about I think the body image stuff and them just not understanding how to effectively communicate together and there is also more conflict in this relationship when Lily Rose begins dating the boy that her sister has a crush on and we're looking at that romantic relationship but also the friendship she has with her friend Cassie and whether that is actually more than Friendship. I really love Bethany Rutter's writing, so whatever she writes next, I'm gonna read it. This next one is one that I have spoken about fairly recently, but I want to speak about it again. <laughs> this is The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory, and this is a rom-com that is set in America, and it follows our main character, Nicole, who goes to a baseball game with her actor boyfriend, expecting it to be just like a normal kind of day out, but then he proposes to her in a very public way. And that is not something that she wanted. She does not want to marry this guy. She did not want a massive grand public proposal. And she just needs to get out of that situation. And a man and his sister help her get out of that situation. And gradually a little romance starts to blossom between her and the guy that helped her out of that situation. Both of these people believe that they're not looking for anything serious. That they're just having fun together. That it's not going to get messy. Like they are purely going to have like a friends with benefits situation. Uh, but it is so clear that they are properly interested in each other and have feelings and want to be in a romantic relationship. This book does have those kind of classic rom-com tropes of, you know, miscommunication, but I just thought this book was so fun. I really believed the characters, I really rooted for them, and I thought the elements of their lives external to the relationship between the two of them were really interesting, and I loved that they had fleshed out fully formed lives outside of that romantic relationship. Also something that I really loved about this book was was the like baking kind of subplot. One of Nicole's best friends runs a cupcake shop and I just, one little element of books that particularly comes up a lot in rom-coms is there being some sort of like baking element to it and I just love it. I just find it so cozy and lovely. Next is a bit of an unusual recommendation for this channel but this is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. Hear me out here. Okay, everything about this book does not sound like it would be a Leanne book, okay? First of all, our main character is called Quentin Coldwater and he is exactly the kind of dick that you think someone with the name Quentin Coldwater would be. This novel begins when Quentin is going for a college interview at Princeton and he finds a strange envelope that is going to change the course of his life forever and basically Quentin ends up at like a magic college. And throughout this novel we are dissecting that idea of why we so desperately want to go to fantasy worlds. Fantasy worlds that present so much legitimate danger, like why are we so desperate to go to these places where horrible and dangerous and life-threatening things happen. But also on another level it is about not thinking that you will be happy as soon as you get something else. So once I get into this school I will be happy, once I get this job I will be happy, once I have this relationship I will be happy. Quentin gets to go to the magical school that he always dreamed of and he is not happy. Without giving spoilers, there is also another journey or adventure that he goes on in another magical world that is essentially Narnia and he thinks once he's there he will be happy and he isn't. And it also dissects this idea of wanting to go to these magical places but not realizing there will also be mundane elements to these magical places. These kids just spend a lot of time working on their essays. I have reread this book a couple of times and there are definitely elements that I think are problematic to say the least and all of the characters are kind of infuriating but I just find the ideas that the book discusses so interesting and this is a book that I read it quite 
poignant parts of my life. The first time I read this book, I read it on one sitting when I was on a coach going to Disneyland. And it was just before I went to university. So I was about to have one of those like, oh, once I get to this place, I'll be happy moments. And it just gave me a lot to think about. I also want to recommend The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. This is a book that really took me by surprise because I'd heard a lot of mixed reviews about it. We are following three sisters who live in an abandoned hotel on a deserted island and they are told that the sea around them is poisonous and basically their parents have spent their entire lives, from their parents' perspective, trying to protect their daughters, particularly protect their daughters from the dangers that men pose to them and the patriarchy pose to them and misogyny pose to them and they do not allow these girls any kind of contact with men with the outside world in any way and they see it as being for these girls own protection until one day three men wash ashore and this changes things this book has an incredible otherworldly quality to it it feels like a fable or a fairy tale it's a book that has such dark undercurrents to it and it's a book where you're never sure exactly what is going to happen next. There is just this ominous feeling throughout the novel that something bad could happen at any time but I think not for the reasons that you might expect based on that plot summary and it's just fascinating to see these girls who for so long were controlled and restricted begin to develop their own independent thinking and their own agency. It's quite a haunting book and I think if you're a fan of Margaret Atwood then you would probably find something in this book that you really enjoy but I think if you've also enjoyed the kind of lyrical style of a writer like Emer McBride then this book would be for you as well. And finally I want to talk about The Shelf by Helly Acton. Now this is a proof copy but the final versions, both the hardback and the paperback, are blue as well. If you are someone that loves reality TV, this book is for you. I am talking like old school Big Brother, Love Island, the circle. Reality shows that kind of have like a social experiment kind of angle to them and if you find them interesting for that kind of reason. And I think the reason I love shows like that and like shows like Love Island is less about what necessarily happens in the hour-long show but actually the conversation that the show facilitates and prompts. And this book is just a fun kind of feminist twist on those kinds of reality shows. So our main character is convinced that her boyfriend is gonna propose to her that it is finally the time, but that is not what happens. What actually ends up happening when her boyfriend whisks her away is that she is dumped on TV. And it turns out a lot of other women are in this situation where they have been dumped on TV and they have to live together and go through this kind of program where they are learning to be what the show deems to be a better version of themselves. Now we as the reader know it is not a better version of themselves, it is a very misogynistic way of thinking, the way these women are being like taught to behave. And they are competing to not be left on the shelf. But we actually end up following the women who are competing in the show coming together in quite a feminist way to again facilitate those conversations about dating. And the women are coming at this from lots of different angles, women who want different kinds of things from relationships and from life. And it really dissects this idea of being desperate to get into a relationship to kind of tick it off your list. And I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a lot of fun. I read this when I was moving from London back to Dublin in July. And I was like packing up all of my books and I had to like, it felt like quite an important decision, like which book I was not going to pack into boxes, the book that I was going to be reading throughout the days that I was packing up my entire life. And this was the book that I left out and I will always just relate it to that time in my life. Helly Acton has a new book coming out called The Couple, which I am really excited to read as well. So there we have it. They are the blue books that I'm recommending to you today. Have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? If you want to find out more information about any of them, they will be linked down below in the description description. If you don't have anything in particular to say about this video, leave me your favourite blue emoji down in the comments. I hope you guys are doing well and I will speak to you in my next video.